Okay guys, today I'm going to show you a really cool neon glow technique that you can use in Photoshop with the theme of future for FMP. I thought this would be a really good addition to some of your experimentation, whether it's doing commercial, portraiture, fashion, um, it does work quite well. So I've got an image here of Taylor Swift. This is from Wonderland magazine. Um, it does make a really good image for this sort of effect. So we're going to start by using the pen tool just here and we're going to draw a triangle. Now the settings we would use for this up here, we want to make sure it is on shape. Our fill needs to be clear, which is up here. And then our stroke is going to be white. We're going to set the size to about 10. Um, you can play around with this depending on your image, but I find this is a good size for my image. So we're going to start by drawing a triangle just here. Now I wanted to avoid getting the bottom of the face in, but I have gone across the forehead and that will be part of the triangle that we will be removing. The next thing we want to do is go down to the bottom of the screen here where our FX is and click on outer glow. And this will start the process of creating that neon glow we are after. Okay, so we're on outer glow just here. Our blend mode is on screen and that should be set automatically, but just check before you start. I've set my opacity to 35 and I've chosen the color pink. You can use any color for this. You can cycle along them. You could use blue, you can use green, but it does work really well if you're using a fluorescent color that you would normally find on a neon sign. And in our element section, the spread I've set at 11. You can make this a bit bigger if you want to, but you don't want to make it um, too high of a percentage or else it'll take up quite a lot of your photograph. I would recommend anywhere between 10 and 20% for this, but again, it depends on the size of your photograph. You can also adjust the size as well. This creates the spread to go a little bit further. I've chosen 40, but again, it's entirely up to you with your photograph. Now we're going to go on to inner glow. We're going to tick the box and then click on the segment. And again, I've set the same color. You could change it around. It doesn't make much difference. You're better off using a similar color. Okay. And again, my opacity is on 24 for this, but play around with it. See what works for you. I'm then going to click OK. So now we've got our triangle. It's got a neon glow to it. We're then going to right click on our shape and we're going to convert to a smart object. This will allow us to remove some of that triangle. There we are. It will look a little bit brighter as you convert it to a smart object, but that's completely normal. It's just flattening the layers. Okay, we're then going to create a layer mask. So the reason we would use a layer mask is to erase parts of an image, but it also allows us to bring back parts if we make a mistake. So to create a layer mask at the bottom here, we've got a rectangle with a circle in and it'll bring up this plain white square here. We're then going to use the paintbrush, making sure it is set to black and we're going to start removing parts of this triangle. So I'm just going to zoom in make my paintbrush a bit bigger and I'm going to erase some of this triangle. Set my opacity to 100. Now as you get nearer the edges you will want to use a smaller paintbrush but you can adjust that when you get to it. Now what I've done with this image is I have removed some of the triangle to give it a bit more depth, to give it a bit more perspective. Obviously with your photograph you can choose to keep or remove as much as you like but I do recommend removing some of the triangle to look like it is going around the back of the head or a hand if you were using a hand. Um, it just gives it a bit of perspective and makes it look a bit more professional. And then once you're finished and you're happy with your result you want to right click on your background and flatten your image. 
and that is our final outcome i hope you have enjoyed this tutorial as always i want you to have a go with this yourself see what you can come up with and if you have an outcome that you're especially proud of i want you to upload it onto instagram or facebook and hashtag it photography takeaway with laura and some of our best outcomes i will share onto our instagram and facebook page if you have any questions then just let me know I'll be around on Microsoft Teams um, all next week and over Easter as well. So don't hesitate to ask me any questions. But for now, that is all. Enjoy your Photoshop and I'll see you next time. Bye.